last fall, CARE 11 reported significant problems for drivers seeking to take their road tests in order to get a driver's license, especially in the Twin Cities. Senator Karen Housley is sponsoring a bill that would potentially alleviate the gridlock by allowing privately employed instructors to give road tests. She now joins me in the studio. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me again, Shannon. In September, the CARE 11 News reported that people were sleeping in their cars or driving, you know, far far-flung areas of Minnesota in order to get their driving tests. Was this the first time that you learned of this issue? No, it was not the first time I had learned of this issue. It actually happened with to me and my daughter. We've got four kids and with the older three there was no problem in getting their driver's license exam, but the youngest one, uh, it was, she failed her first time and then we wanted to get her back in and it was going to be a two-month wait, so we went early morning, woke up early morning hoping we could get in one of those driver's spots that were going to open up. We didn't. We had to do it again the next day. Uh, she passed. Um, but then she's now 22. So I went, what happened between the 33-year-old and the 22-year-old? And then I have a girlfriend who has five kids under the age of 18, and she said, oh, wait, it's way worse. She drove 700 miles for her oldest two kids to get their driver's license. They each failed one time, but then she went up to Moorhead, then she went down to Rochester. Uh, and so this was an issue that I can't figure out why it kept getting worse and worse and what the backlog was. So the CARE 11 story just put icing on the cake, but I already had the bill drafted before this, the CARE 11 story. So your bill would authorize private instructors to give uh, driving exams in addition to the state um, facilities that do. What are the benefits of this approach? Well, you, it just opens it up to have a lot more uh, people offering or, or doing the driver's license testing. Um, and it... It would still, um, it would still be have to be licensed by these individuals. It was a driving school that came to me, and they said, you know, here they go through all of these hours of driving with the kids, the behind the wheel, and then they're 50 hours with their parents, um, and then they actually really know if this kid's ready or not ready. But then you send them off to the state to get uh, their test, then they fail, and then they have to wait another four months. They said, you know, wouldn't it be great if we could actually go to the state, be licensed just like they are to give the driver's license exam. Um, and so I went, oh, that's a, that's a really good idea. So that's what sparked it. And then again, the, the long wait for all of these kids. So they do it for bus driving um, for your CDL licenses. They have third party uh, private testers. So I thought it would be a great idea to do to open it up so these kids don't have to wait three, four months to get in there to get their driver's license test. So you mentioned that these uh, third party testers would be licensed by the state. Is there a way to guarantee that the standards are the same? Yeah, because it would be the same person at the state who would license the person who is doing the driving exam, not the student, but the teacher. Mm -hmm. And it would be the exact same over here, just like they do it for the bus driver's license. So these people would have to go take the class and get licensed by the state. So it would be apples to apples. They would have to be licensed by the same state of Minnesota. Now, presumably, the private instructors would charge a fee in order to, I mean, because you, you have to pay for the class anyway, and then I guess it would end with yeah. the exam. But when you take your test with the state, your first two driving tests are free. So is this setting up a two-tiered system where people with more means have easier access to their driving tests than those with, without? I think what it does do, and I, I still, I was just calling the state too, because the guy in the testifier said it was free, but when I looked online, it said it was like $32, and I can't remember back when. But no, what I think it'll actually do is it'll open it up for more free spots to be available. If people want to sign up at a driving school and then just have that be the end test result, they'd still have to go to the state to get their, their driver's license. But that would open up so many more of the free spots at the state, so it would, it would actually benefit everybody. The assistant commissioner for the Department of Public Safety testified before the Transportation Committee that the recent gridlock is due in part to a 47% failure rate of first-time test takers, as well as 20% of people who just schedule exam and don't show up. Um, what if DPS just hired more staff and expanded hours? They did that last fall. They opened up on weekends and everything. If they, if they accommodated more to the high demand would that solve the issue, or do you really think the third party is, is the right way to go? Well, I don't know why there's a, if the 47% failure rate would be any different in 2020 than it was in 2012. Uh, but the 20% 20, the 20 that's not showing up, what they were doing at the department was actually letting certain driving schools 
reserve their spots. And so if there's no show, that's a fault of their own because if a kid uh, goes through a certain driving school, they only allowed like a handful of driving schools, uh, gave preferential treatment to these handful of driving schools. And they schools. have since stopped that practice. And they, end of January. Yes. So, so I'm not sure where they're getting the 20% no-shows because now it's only February. So I, I question those numbers and, and the reason behind it. So I don't know. Uh, I think it would be good for everybody, for the parents, they don't have to take off work to drive to Moorhead. Uh, for the kids, they don't have to have that anxiety waiting three months to get their driver's test, and it'll free up more spots for everybody else. Now, the assistant commissioner also expressed concern about safety. He said there are several other states that have that do allow third party and that their driving records are not as good. They have more accidents per million drivers than we do in Minnesota. We are a very safe driving state. The assistant commissioner raised that concern. Do you agree? Uh, no, I don't agree. Uh, there's two states, Idaho and Montana, that have third-party testing. And, and the terrain in Idaho and Montana is so much different than Minnesota also. Uh, and there are many states that do third-party bus driving tests, and the accident uh, are equal across the, across the board. So the real test is going to be this summer when all of, you know, the 16 and 17 year olds are ready to go get their licenses. How will DPS handle it this summer unless your bill passes? Would it be in place in time for peak driver exam season? Yeah, we would have to get we would have to get the bill to pass and we would have to get third party testers in to get their exam. And we're, we're approaching that season. It starts in, in May. So hopefully we can get it through and get it passed. Um, I actually think it doesn't take effect until August 1st, so, but we still have the August, September, and October driving drivers out there with the no snow uh, <laughs> testing out there, so hopefully we can get that done. And at this point, do you know, is there bipartisan support? Is there something happening in the House? Yeah, I, I just heard that somebody is authoring it in the House, and I do have bipartisan support um, from, my, my, from my fellow senators, legislators here. So. Hoping we can get it heard in the House and we can come to some sort of agreement and get this done for our kids. Senator Karen Housley, always a pleasure. Thanks, Shannon.